The Republican Party, well, the neocons to be specific, have been saying for the past couple of days, or weeks or so, the Republicans need to abandon Trumpism, need to abandon populism, and bring back Bushism, bring back neoconservatism, bring back Rhino Republicans, they are the future of the Republican Party. They kept screeching for the past couple of weeks. Really? This may be the dumbest thing I have heard in a long, long time. The Rhinos and Neocons were killing the Republican Party for decades. For years, I should say. But since 2008... In 2004, they've been killing the Republican Party until 2016 when Donald Trump won the Republican nomination and went on to win the presidency. And you got these neocons kept saying, oh, we, we cannot appeal to Blump's base. It's a small base of the electorate. The electorate is socially liberal, economically libertarian. We need to go down the rhinoism, neoconservatism, more immigration. Wrong. The American electorate is far more socially conservative and nationalist and more economic populist and economic nationalist. You know what this shows? This shows the 2016 electorate. And yes, there's a 2020 electorate graph, but I have my grievances with it. But you get the point, all right? It virtually shows all of Trump's base is economic nationalists and populists, but also social nationalists and socially conservatives, not libertarians. In fact, look at the base that uh, the neocons are trying to appeal to. The bottom right, you know, my, my economic conservatism and my, my, my libertarianism, my, there's basically nobody there. This is who the Republican base want to appeal to. Yet look at the top. This is the base Trump appeals to. This is straight up Trump's base. Economic nationalists, economic populists. Social nationalists, social conservatives. That's almost half the country just that voted for Trump are, is up here. That's not including a lot of these socially conservative, more economic left-wing people that would vote for a Republican if they became more economically populist. And in fact, a lot of these voters, they don't vote for Trump because not a policy, but because of Trump himself. I'm not saying Trump is a bad candidate, but he does, in fact, turn some people off with his Twitter rants, all right? I, I'm a big supporter of Trump. I still believe that he has a chance of winning this election, but I everybody has to agree he does turn off people with his Twitter and with some of the stuff he says. I personally think that's ridiculous, but it's true. So if you had someone that has Trump exact policies but ran not like Trump on Twitter, not be like Trump on Twitter, but just be a regular person that just doesn't go, that goes on Twitter, but doesn't start the wildfires that Trump does. Republicans would win in a landslide every single time. Many Americans, I would say at least 60% of Americans, want strong borders, very anti-free trade, economic populists. Not this garbage the Republicans want to appeal to. Oh, bottom right, my, my libertarians are basically nobody of the electorate. If they appeal to everybody north, everybody that's socially conservative, right, and more economic populist, Republicans would be nearly unstoppable. And I want to give you guys an example of how stupid the Republican Party is. So you want to know what the map would look like for battleground maps? between the Republicans and Democrats, between a neocon, if the neocons win this war, versus the traditional Democrat neoliberal. Well, this would be the battleground map. Um, Republicans, um, you have a big issue. You virtually have to win every single state in this scenario to even come close to winning 
Alright? Yeah, sure. Texas may be going Republican by 15 points because they swung um, Travis County by 15 points Republican to appeal to those woke progressives. Alright? Sure, they... You, you know, you Trump may... um. Trump may do significantly worse. Trumpism itself may do significantly worse in Texas. But looking at the trends, I highly doubt that Texas is going to go anything below what it did this election. I do believe Republicans will win it by 6, 7, 8, 9, even 10 points for the next 12 years or so. So, yeah, sure, you may have Texas safe Republican, right? But, but what does it cost you? It makes the battleground map harder for you to win. All right, let's say, oh, they win Arizona, win Florida, which is highly unlikely because um, you look at the trends and stuff, that, that's just, no. If you don't run someone like Trump, you're not going to get that Cuban vote, and you're kind of screwed, all right? But let's just say they do, and they win, let's say, North Carolina, all right? They but let's say they pull New Hampshire, a more socially left-wing state. And let's say for the heck of it, when Nevada, when Iowa, doesn't matter. If Democrats win Ohio and win Wisconsin, or in fact, they only just need Ohio and they win. So what are the Republicans doing? <laughs> this would become their future. And this is probably a, a very lenient simulation for the republicans all right but then you get these rhinos saying oh but colorado and virginia are gonna be competitive okay let's say they do win colorado by some ungodly miracle and virginia by some ungodly miracle well guess what you lose wisconsin lose iowa and you lose florida what are you gonna do you're screwed in this situation you can't win because, oh, we got to win back Colorado. We need to win back Virginia. Rebuild that Sunbelt Wall. Which breaks apart the party instantly. This isn't a smart strategy. This is the strategy the Republicans want to do. This is how stupid these neocons are. And really, you want to know what the battleground map would look like if the Republicans kept going down the path of Trumpism, nationalism, populism. This... This may seem ridiculous to have New Mexico a battleground state, or Florida safe, or, well, not safe Republican, but not really a battleground anymore. Well, for one, for Florida, if you run like Ron DeSantis, yeah, that state's not going to be really that competitive. It's basically become like, like the new kind of Ohio type where it's more Republican, so it's kind of a waste of time to spend time there. But New Mexico, you might be asking yourself, oh, well, Blump lost New Mexico by 11. Well, let me just show you guys something. Let's just take a look at the exit polls from 2016, all right, from New Mexico. You, you notice something odd about the biggest issue of the country at the time, the economy. 55% said the economy was the biggest issue. And guess what? They broke for Clinton by 13 points. This was because people did not trust Trump with the economy, all right? And really, you take a look at the exit polls now, and look at this. 83% said if the economy was their biggest issue, they went for Trump. Imagine what would happen in New Mexico with that statistic. But what screwed over Trump was this bastard right here. <laughs> coronavirus. 81% people said that coronavirus was the biggest issue went to Biden. If coronavirus never happened, let's say it splits 50-50 between coronavirus, people went to the economy, the other half went to healthcare. In that scenario, Trump would almost win New Mexico. So it's not unreasonable to say New Mexico is a surprisingly more Republican state. And really, in this scenario, you just need North Carolina, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. That's all you would need. And again, I'm not saying New Mexico is a safe Republican state, but just imagine this. You can build up a new Rus red wall, right? You just build this new red wall, so in the future, if you do lose Georgia, which is terrifying for Republicans, 
and lose Arizona, which is actually not as bad as people thought it was going to be, and lose Minnesota, and lose Nebraska second, and lose New Hampshire. They would have to lose Pennsylvania and Wisconsin in that scenario. Why do the Republicans not want to go down this path? Where, okay, we're going to lose the, you know states like Georgia, and states like Arizona are eventually going to become more tilt D than lean D states. Why do the Democrat Republicans not want this? Why do they want to be like this, where they're going to get blown out every single time when they have a chance to expand the battleground map to biggest margins you would ever think of? It's stupid that these rhinos want to appeal to this bottom right quadrant of the population or the electorate. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, hit the like button down below. Subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and yes, uh, you should guys should join the channel. That will be super appreciated. And yes, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.